Welcome to the lecture on sample size calculation for mean differences. If you don't know what is mean differences, please go and watch my lecture on t-test and z-test for two samples. Here we are doing exactly the same where in researchers that we need to compare two means we can apply the specific formula that we are discussing in this specific lecture to calculate the sample size. What do you mean by mean differences? Okay, assume that we need to compare two populations in relation to height. Okay, so we have one population A, we have height and for height we have mu A which is the population mean of population A and for height there is another population assume that we are comparing two countries Korea versus United States, Japan versus China, something like that. So population B, where the population mean height is mu B. So you know that we can't compare the population means because of that we are taking samples from two populations. We have X bar A and X bar B. Now we are going to compare the two populations. First of all, we need to know what are the factors affecting the sample size when we are comparing two means. As I discussed previously, major factor is the confidence level that you need. If you are interested in 95%, we know that Z equals 1.96. Okay, in our example, as we discussed several examples with 95%, I thought of applying 99% for this specific research. So what is the Z value for 99% confidence interval? That is 2.58. If it is 99.7, you can apply 3. But in confidence level, 99% equal 2.58 mean plus or minus 2.58 SDS. I discussed these things in several of my previous lectures. The next thing is power, which I have not discussed in the previous lecture, but I discussed the power in the first lecture where I introduced this concept of sample size calculation. You know that power is 1 minus beta or 1 minus type 2 variable. Generally, we are going for 80% or 90% power, but in this lecture, I am interested in 90%. So, if it is 90%, again, we have to apply Z value for power as well. So, if you go to Z table and look for the, this 90%, so what? 90% means the beta error is 10%. So, 1 minus beta, so beta is 10%, that will be 90% power. So, 90% power, the equivalent Z value is 1.28. If you can't remember the power, please go and watch my lecture number 59 where I discussed the concept of power in detail. The next most important thing is standard deviation of the outcome variable. I told you in the lecture number 59, I discussed how this variability is affecting the sample size. If you need to capture higher variability, you need the higher sample size. If you need to capture very lower variability, the sample size will be low. So the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So here we are interested in the variance of the outcome variable. And the other thing is expected difference between mu x bar a and x bar b. I told you if the difference between these two is high, that means obvious variability is there. Obvious variability means even if you capture few people from the population A and few people from population B, that may be enough to detect the difference. Why? The, even in one individual, that observed difference may be there. If the observed difference, the difference between population parameters is less, if you capture one individual from one population and one individual from other population, that there might not be a difference. So, if the expected difference is less, you need higher sample size to determine this difference. And how do you find out the expected difference? Because we are going to determine the difference. Of course, you need to refer previous literature as I discussed in the previous lectures. You need to find out previously reported difference for sample size calculation. For that, you have to find out some research from your locality. If there are no, you can find out research from maybe your country. If there are no, you can find out research maybe from your area. If you are South Asian, maybe something from Southeast Asia at least. If there are no research, you can get evidence from somewhere in the world. Still, if there are no evidence, so you can assume based on your experience. Because you are doing this research as you have a hypothesis. To hypothesize something, there you should have some kind of guess. So you can apply that guess 
as the expected defaults. But here, you may not be able to find out the evidence from anywhere of the world because we may be comparing two populations here. This is the formula for sample size calculation. n equals 2 sigma square z plus z divided by d square. What is sigma? Sigma is the population standard deviation of the outcome variable. So this is the common one because we apply t test or z test. One of the assumption for uh, t test and z test is equal variance. So we are assuming that the two standard deviations are same. So we can get common standard deviation of the both samples from both population. So this is the standard deviation of the outcome variable and assume that we are comparing height the standard deviation for the outcome variable is 20 centimeters this is for our example is it 1 minus alpha 1 minus alpha means the confidence level that we are interested in we discussed this confidence research level even in the previous lecture i told you that we are interested in 99 percent this time so the is it 1 minus alpha equals to 2.58 Z1 minus beta is the Z value equal for power. So I told you in this example, I am interested in 90% power. So this Z will be equal to 1.28. And D is the expected difference. Okay, we will assume that this D equals 10 centimeters. So that one population is taller, the other population is shorter. So we are expecting 10 centimeter difference from both populations. So we'll apply these values to the formula. So n equals 2 sigma square less. So because of that 220 square multiplied by 2.58 plus 1.28 within bracket square divided by 10 is the expected difference between two samples that is 10 square. The answer will be 119.2. So this is the required minimal sample size. So we can't have 0.2 people for to determine height so the minimal sample size will be 120 for this example if i quickly recall again now you can understand that when the variance is high when the standard deviation high we need higher sample size when you need higher power you need higher sample size when you need higher confidence you need higher sample size when the expected difference is high your sample size will be low. When the expected difference is low, you need higher sample size. That is the summary or introduction for calculating sample size for mean differences. Thank you very much.